All right, so before we start, we're going to do a recap or a review quiz. Question. All right, so review quiz. quiz. Uh, could I have a reader for me, please? Someone read? Anyone? Which of the following indigenous groups settled in Dominica and St. Vincent? All right. Read the responses. Tainos, Maya, Kalinago, and Aztecs. All right, class, which is the correct answer? Which of the following indigenous groups settled in Dominica and St. Vincent? Is it A, Taino, B, Kalinago, B, Maya, C, Kalinago, or D, Aztecs? Kalinagos. Kalinago. Kalinago. See, the answer is Kalinago. Correct. Another. Trinidad and Puerto Rico. Oh, sorry. Taylor, you could read that question for me, please. All right. Taylor disappeared. Sir, that wasn't Kayla, that was Joanna. Oh, Joanna, all right. Yes, sir. No, Trinidad I said Taylor, Taylor, Taylor. Oh, okay, sir. Taylor to read the question. Sir, the, um, which of the following indigenous groups settled in Dominica and St. Vincent? That's not the question we're at now. Okay. Trinidad and Puerto Rico are settled by. Yes. Read the responses. Taylor and Kalinago, Taylor and Mayas, Kalinago and Aztecs, Mayas and Aztecs. What's the answer? Taylor and Kalinago. Taylor and Kalinago. Very much so correct. That's the answer. So for today's class, what we're going to do is that the objective is that we're going to describe the social, economic, political, and religious practices of the Kalinago Indians in the Americas up to 1492. Uh, Baker, when we talk about social, what are some of the questions we're asking? Is Soleil here? Deco? Yes, sir. Um, roles of the men, uh, social structure. Food. Yes. All right. of their community. All right. Very good. Sir, so, can I also anyone else? Yes, sir. I can answer. Where Go do ahead. They, where do they live? What do they do? How mm -hmm. have they always lived there? Do they have anything they want or need? And what are their families like? Excellent, excellent. Excuse me, sir. Go ahead. Isn't it basically like how they interact with each other? How they interact more than how they interact with each other. But it's interaction is very important, but is more than interaction. So when we're looking at social, where do they live? What do they do? Have they always lived there? Or how do they 
do they have everything they want or need? What are their families like? So those are some of the questions we look at when we're looking at the social. Now, when we're looking at the Kalinagos from your work from last week, Wednesday, what were the social practices of the Kalinagos? Anyone? So you're talking like how like they probably like when they said that the caciques will marry more than one wife and stuff. That is one of their social practices, yes. Any other? Social practices, how they would have lived. What was their village like? Okay. <laughs> so the caciques would live in one house by themselves. Cacique, cacique, Kalinagos, cacique. Oh, what's their, what's Kalinagos leader's name? So Remember, we are looking at Kalinagos, a different group. Oh, okay. Like we are through now with the ta Tainos. We're now looking at the, the Kalinagos. Excuse me, sir. Go ahead. Sir, I think their leader was called the Ab Obutu. The Obutu, very good, excellent. What else you know about the, the Kalinagos? Sir, they... Go ahead. The men and women eat separately? Eat separately, yes. Um, they had, they wore little to no clothes, but plenty of jewelry. A lot of jewelry, very correct. And so and those they were are- They were warlike people? They, that's what they said. They were warlike fears. Okay, fears. And so what we're going to do, thank you very much, everyone. Uh, what we're going to do today is that we're going to look at some of their social aspects. So one of the first thing is that we need to know their communities, what their communities were like. Just like the Tainos, the Kalinagos settled near the coast and the rivers, but the islands in which they settled were very mountainous very, very mountainous areas that they would have settled. And because they would have settled on very mountainous islands, for example, like Dominica and St. Vincent, they, and their settlement pattern, so let me repeat, their islands were very mountainous, that's one of the, their settlement pattern. And the next thing is that they would have settled just like the, the Tainos, close to rivers and co the coast. So that is the second, for, second uh, element in their settlement pattern. Next is their the chief of their the chief of their community, as we know, was the Obuto. And the Obuto house was very similar to the Kasik house. It was rectangular, but it was much smaller than the Taino, the Kasik's house. Same rectangular shape, but it was much smaller. Uh, you know, as mentioned by Denton. Uh, uh, that women and men had ate separately, but not only they ate separately, but they would have slept separately. They did not live in the same house. The cacique, sorry, the cacique in the Taino village, both the male and the female would have lived together, but in the Kalinago setting, they did not live together. In fact, one history book noted that the, the Obuto house, which was the Carbet, that was the name of the house, the Carbet, in that house, females were not allowed in that house. Not allowed in that house. So, 
So there was separation in, in terms of how the males and the females lived. Just like the Tainos, the Kalinagos, very much similar. They had the same uh, furniture in their house, very few. They also slept on cotton mats and hammocks, and their roofs were made from thatch palm. In fact, they had also clay pots that they would have used or their various different bowels. So that was their social, their social practices, some of their social practices. Now, Christian, Kalisa, could you read this for me from Beverly Steele? It's a quote from a historian. Okay. There was a strict division of labor between the sexes. The men fished, hunted, trained the boys and went to battles. The women planted, ground maize, prepared cassava, gathered cotton, made clothes, hammock, baskets, pottery, and prepared meals and looked after the children. Beverly All right. Very good. So tell me, explain to me now, Christian, what Beverly Steele is saying right here. Um, based on what she's saying, I guess the men did the harder tasks than the women. You find Basically. planting to be easy? No, sir, but going to battles and stuff. All right, good. And that is very much similar to some more society, especially European societies. In Europe, great civilization and in Africa, most of the times, it was the males who went to war. And if you realize that the gendered practices and roles are very much similar to which, to which group? Which other Tainos. group? The Tainos. Very, very similar. The, if you have the book uh, by what that? Hilary Beckles and Varine Shepherd. What the name? One second. If you have the book Liberty is Lost, right? Let us show you the book to see if you have it. All right, ladies, have you, you have that book? Yes, sir. Good? Yes, sir. No, so, sir. No, sir. For, for those of you, if, I'm not saying that is a must that you have to have that book, but that book is, is very important to have also because you can read from it, especially when you're doing I'll, you use this book right up until what grade again? Six form. Yeah. Right up to six form. So if you plan to do history up to six form, you can purchase the book. If you don't plan to, I'm not going to say that you must purchase it. It's not a must. All right. So we know for sure that they had very strict practices now in this book now liberty's lost uh the first Be hillary beckles and very shepherd argues that the tainos came in when the kalinagos came into the caribbean after the the tainos and so their settlement patterns were similar but they were not fully settled in or, or what they are trying to say is that their cultures were not fully developed or there was not much distinction between the cultures, all right, of the two groups. Could I get Morrison? Morrison, could you read this for me from David Brown and Henderson Carter, two historians? 
Socially, the roles of men and women in Kaling Kalinago society were quite clear how each individual would function in that role. David Brown and Henderson Carter. Yes. So what Brown and Carter argues is that just like supporting the point that Beverly Steele is that the gender roles were very, very clear in these societies, what the males did and what the females did. All right. Another view, same, we're going now to Liberty's Lost. James, Bianca James. Yes, sir. Could you read that quote for me, please? Kalinaga communities had more males than women, so their one objective was to interrogate Taino women into their communities. All right. So could you somebody explain to me what that means? Um, sir, I mm. think they're going to kidnap the women. Yes, so they are going to go to war with the Tainos for their women. That is what they are going to do. And so in the so if you are going to, for example, somebody come and kidnap uh well. Say, for instance, somebody kidnapped a Taino woman. What you're going to find is that when she goes to her new location, she's going to bring some of her culture with her. She's not going to forget about everything that she learned in her village. She's going to bring some of her culture and some of her roles that she would have done in the day. The, the Taino villages. And so, in fact, the Kalinago villages had more men than women. But one thing for sure was that most of the women that were actually there were Taino women in the society. Another thing is that we need to know with gender roles is that because the society was built on Kalinago society, uh, societies were built on war in, war in which they were always at battle. The males went through a period of in initiation at puberty. So once they reached puberty, they were actually taught how to go and actually fight. Similar to the Tainos, they're the men, we know for sure, at, for gendered role, they were hunters, they cleared the land, they fished, they built the houses, they built the canoes from the silk tree, they went to war, they built weapons, just like the female in the Taino communities, the female rear for the children, plant crops, the giving of the basket, mocks, pottery, all these different stuff. Children, same thing, reaping crops, fetch water. The girls help with the different chores in the house while the boys learn the art of fighting and hunting and also to go to war. All right? So these were some of their gender practices. Another thing, ladies, when we're looking at the Taino, the Kalinagos, is that their recreational activities were very much similar to the Tainos. Some of their recreational activities include the smoking of tobacco, singing and dancing. Conch shell was used as musical instrument. And I've seen in one history book that said that the, they also played the game Batos, that ball game. All right, so that was one of the things that they would have also used uh, in from what I've seen in, a, in one history book. I'm not sure if it is completely 100% correct. Anybody has seen something else from their reading? Sir, they said they played a ball game, but it wasn't necessarily battles. They didn't, all right. So they, they said that they had a ball game, but they didn't. Put a name to it. Anyway, 
if you look at the word battles, I doubt they would have called it the name battles because battles to me actually sounds like a Spanish. The Spanish when they answer the game and the Spanish call it battles. That is my interpretation. Same thing like the Aritos, right? Which is how the Tainos dance and sing and play that little festival. That sounds like a Spanish influence to me. It doesn't sound like original Kalinago or Taino, but that is my personal view. It is not correct because I do not have any evidence to support that view. So the recreational activities, these were some of the recreational activities. Next. And where would where you would have read that? About Sir, I don't, Sir, I don't, it was like an extract I was reading. It was in the paper. The newspaper? Yes, sir. All right, good. The next thing, ladies, uh, they had some different gendered, not gendered rules, but some customs. So somebody could read some of the customs that they had. This is from Beverly Steele, a historian, and this is a book that she wrote it in, Grenada, A History of Its People. And they found quite a lot of Kalinago artifacts in Grenada. Somebody else have a nice bird in the background. Oh, so sorry. Lorraine? Yes, sir. Could you read the quotes for me from Beverly Steele? Yes, sir. Um, when a wife was about to give birth, the father would go into a period of fasting called COVID. Yes. Make child. One. Make child was sprinkled with the father. No, this should actually be male. Uh, male child was sprinkled with the father's blood. Mm -hmm. The and next one. Mariners cut their hair. So in the in the Kalinago village, when somebody died, they cut their hair, both the males and the females. And also, when a male child was born, he, he was sprinkled with his father's blood. So those were some of the, the customs that they had in their society. Thank you very much. Sawyers. Is that Shania? Shania, sir. Shania, my bad. Sorry about that. Could you read another quote from me from Steel? Dress. They wore bracelets called Masada. They applied flowers, petals, and gold dust to their bodies. They were stone and coral around their arms, wrists, and legs. Very good. So what she's describing here, tell me what she's describing. In your own words. Their appearance. Their physical appearance, how they would dress and so, in fact, earlier in the class, someone would have mentioned that they wore quite a lot of jewelry. In fact, they would have painted their bodies in gold dust. And they would have also applied a dye, a red dye to their bodies also. And ladies, yesterday I was supposed to tell you from the class that yesterday was the International Day of the Indigenous People. And so the world would have remembered people of indigenous descent. Thank you very much. Some of their skills and technologies of the 
Kalinagos, remember we would have looked at some of them yesterday. The Kalinagos and the Tainos had the very same uh, skills and also skills and technologies. And so they would have made spears, traps, hooks, lines, and nets from wood, stone, shell, and other available materials. Now they had quite a lot of bowls. They made carvings in rocks, especially, but we are not seeing any carving in the rocks, like big rocks, huge rocks here in, in the, well, I'm not even sure about Puerto Rico. Maybe in Puerto Rico they have it, or Cuba, or in Hispaniola, but we have not seen, I'm not aware of any in Jamaica where carvings were actually made in the rocks in Jamaica. I'm not sure, it could have. But in Grenada, they actually found carvings that the Kalinagos actually made there in the rocks. Where it is. I didn't include that in the slide. Okay, here. So this is one of the carving, which is still there. So if you should visit Grenada, you can go and visit where the Kalinag the Kalinagos rock and you'll see the carvings that they would have made as very abstract images. Anybody would like to interpret these images here? Try to interpret it. Sir? Go ahead. Sir, I think it's the worship of one of their zemis. But they didn't have, remember, they never had zemis, you know? What are their zemis? The history book has been very silent on it. They would have had their gods, but this seems as if it was one of their gods. Yeah. The rock was in the formation of their gods. So, or they would have made the carvings of their gods on the, <clears throat> in the rocks. So that big black thing is a rock? It's a big rock, yes, a big, big rock. And you see it is right next to somebody's house, the person's house there. A lot of history. Uh, yes. Where am I now? All right, so they also would have used carvings in rocks, uh, cotton, they made, they used cotton to make rope, cords, and thread. Now their diet was very similar to the Tainos, but different. So for example, the, one of the major difference between the Tainos and the Kalinagos diet, repeat. One of the major difference, one of the major differences between the Tainos and the Kalinagos diet is that the Taino they didn't use arrow roots, but the Kalinagos use it. Also, they both would have used cassava, maize, sweet potato, cotton, groundnut, and all these different stuff. Eat in terms of meat, both of them would have had fish, crab, lobster, shellfish, parrot, ducks, agouti. Special dishes, very same. They would have done some of the very same dishes. Pepper pot, cassava bread, barbecue slash jerk, cassava wine. Fruits, they would have also used some of the very same fruits. All right? Pineapples. Star fruits, mommy apple, hot plum, guava, papaya. So these are some of the food that they would have had. Same thing like the 
Kalina, the Tainos, the only difference is that Arirut was not a part of the, the Tainos Daya. But there's one exception is that when it comes to meat, look at Franklin. Anybody know Franklin? Yes, sir. Yes, my favorite cartoon, still watch Franklin. The Franklin here is, they didn't eat Franklin, the turtle. The Kalinagos didn't eat the turtle. They believed that the turtle made them stupid. So I thought it was not, I didn't know it was made them stupid. I thought it made them slower since they had to war. It was, well, it's slow. Some history book has it that it made them slower and others slow and stupid. Yeah. Go ahead. If we're gonna write that, you couldn't say um, it made them stupid. You, 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 um, you have to write like the thought that it made them stupid. Yes, they thought, in they reality, thought that, that you think that would make them stupid. Yes, they thought that the turtle made them stupid. All right. So this is so that was the exception, but we know for the sure for the turtle in in places like the for the Taino settlement, they ate the turtles a lot in the Taino settlement. And I, the eggs. Yeah, yes, also. And guess what? I know that for sure that the Taino women, they either eat the turtles. They are not going to adapt to everything. They would have gone to, that is my personal view. Because if I go somewhere and I used to eat something and they said to me that I cannot. Say for instance, I go to a country and they say I can't eat chicken. And I eat it still. Exactly. I'm, and then capture me and bring me to a country and say, chicken, it's bad. This is wrong. I'm going to still eat my chicken. <laughs> I'm going yeah. to add and eat my chicken. So I believe it, you know, women, if they would have been eating chicken all of turtle all of their life, and then they be, they got captured, they're going to add and eat it. Remember, they're doing something. Go ahead. I think the reason why the Kalinagos have such a um similar um social activities and stuff like that is because when they captured those Taino women, yes. they brought in their culture and they adopted to that culture and put some of the things that they believe in it to like thinking that the turtle is going to make them stupid. All right. But remember, the, the, I, so that is one exception. Maybe it's the men from the Kalinago who said, no, we are not going to eat turtle. They can cook anything else and give me, but not the turtle. But we know for sure that she still put a little turtle in the pot, right? He didn't know what the turtle, when she cook up that pepper pot, full of top of pepper, all different type of meat, they're not going to know turtle meat in it. <laughs> Cus customs, ladies, is Kalinago custom. Same thing as we mentioned before, like the Tainos, they flatten the baby's head, paint their bodies colorful, wear the parrot feathers or bird feathers also. Where they wear a lot of jewelry. And, but there's one difference between the Kalinagos and the Tainos is that the Kalinagos hung the skull of the bones of their victims in their houses. So once they go to war as a trophy, the friends are when you have, have done something well, you got you get a plaque or a trophy. For them, the the skull of bones of their victims, those who they would have devoured, uh, was hung in their house. And maybe because of that practice, what would what you think would be the assumption? Because of they were, um, cannibals. cannibals. So maybe because of this practice. So once the European came and they saw skull of bones in their houses, immediately they said, no, man, 
let her, let her watch because they might be looking at me and say, this one look like a nice, a good <laughs> So, so with that now, the they just say no, these people are cannibal, they are going to eat. They say they are watching themselves. So, ladies, those are some of their social practices that they would have had. Next, their economic, very similar economic practices. But one of the major difference between the Kalinagos and the Tainos was that the Kalinagos used tobacco as a form of currency. Major, major difference that they use tobacco as a form of currency. So they did, they were subsistent farmers. They did slash and burn, they farmed, they gathered, they were hunters, they fished, and they also trade. Note the difference between the Kalinagos and the Tainos. Because in the exam, they ask you for the similarities, differences between the group. I can't wait for us to go back to face-to-face -face class so I can give a nice test on past paper question on the Tainos and the Kalinag. Political. So now we're looking at their political system. As we mentioned before, that the ruler of the Kalinag village was called the Obuto. And this person was elected, not like the Tainos. For the Tainos, it was hereditary. It was through a bloodline. It passed on through family. Clearly in this society, this society seems, the Kalinago society seems to have a bias against females. Females were not part of the Obuto. Uh, was not, could never be an Obutu, right? And so what were some of the roles they did? They presided over the feast. They also had several wives. And below the Obutu was the Tubutu, Le, Hate, Afe, sorry, and this person was the headman. These were the headmen. They fall immediately under the Obutu. And for these persons, they oversee fishing, farming, and distribution of land. Now, what are the major difference between this community and the Taino community when it comes to their political system? One major difference. Women weren't selected at all. Women weren't selected at all. That is one. Another one. In terms of the role of the leader. The, what is it, the role of the Kasik versus the role of the Obutu? Hmm. Sir, do the Kasik take part in like religious ceremonies and stuff? Yes, the Kasik, they took part in religious ceremonies and they also, they also did religious ceremony, but the Kasik also played a major role in the religious ceremony than the Obutu. The, another thing is that the Kasik also were the ones who oversee fishing, farming, and distribution of land. That was the role of the Kasik. All right. Religious practices. Somebody, could you read that for me, please? Poly polytheism is the belief in A, multiple gods, B, multiple doctrines, C, multiple forms of one God. What's the answer? A, multiple, A, multiple, gods. multiple gods. Multiple gods. Multiple gods. So just like the Tainos, they had their gods, 
but they would have carved their gods as you see right here in stones. They didn't build their gods like in the form of a zemi. All right? The, the other thing, ladies, is that the Kalinagos, as we know, they were polytheistic and they, they believed in an evil spirit, which is my, my bow, Maboya and Maboya was actually, they actually offered what you call now, offered gifts in the form of fruits and meal to the evil spirit. The Boyas was also the priest. So they had a priest who was also a medicine person, medicine man. And this person were the main person in charge of the religious activities in the society. They were the ones also, also who trained the boys to become priests and they cared for the gods. Just like the Tainos, the religious ceremony was used, tobacco was used in the religious ceremony and they also worshiped their ancestors. Another major thing with their service was that cassava was offered to the gods. All right? So we know for sure that And so one thing for sure is that we know that they were polytheistic they also believe in anim animism, which is the belief, as we know, that the animals and the plants, they actually have some form of, they were alive, the rivers and these things, the rocks, they were alive. And so because they had the belief that these things were alive, they worship nature. They had several different gods, just like the Tainos. Next. All right, so we know for sure that they would have also worshiped their ancestors. So the gods also represent some of their ancestors. All right, ladies. So these are their religious practices. Notice the political practices how their houses were actually built similar to the Tainos, but it was much smaller. Economic activities, very similar. Exception when it comes to food, the arrow roots and the turtle. Some of the instruments that they would have used. Any question, ladies? Sir, can you please go back on the religious one, please? Here? Yes, thank you. Any question, ladies? If there is no question, then we are through. Remember, tomorrow for tomorrow's class, you're, you are not meeting by a Zoom. You are going to in your notebooks, not on Google Classroom, in your notebooks. You are going to draw your table, and you're going to do the very same thing for the Mayas. So your role is to go and read on the Mayas, and you're going to, once you read on the Mayas, you're going to actually complete the table, look at your social, political, religious, economic. All right? Yes, sir. So that's what you're going to do for the Mayas. Next week, when we meet, we are not meeting Monday, we're not meeting Tuesday, because we are not meeting Monday and Tuesday next week, because next week is a holiday. We're going to meet on the Wednesday. And so on the Wednesday, we're going to start to look at the Mayas on Wednesday. 
we're going to look at their society. So you have right up until Wednesday to do the Mayas. After that, ladies, you're going to get a test on the, which is a graded test on the Taino, the Kalinagos, and the Mayas. Graded test. When is that, sir? It is going to be not, let me tell you when the test is going to be. So the test is not going to be next week, the 24th, the 21st. The test is going to be on the 28th. The 28th of October. That's when you are getting the text. Okay, your, sure. your first graded test, Tainos, Kalinagos, Tainos, Kalinagos, Mayas, first test. And then we're going to move on to the Europeans, the coming of the Europeans and their impact. That's what we're going to do for November. The Europeans and how they would have impacted the, the indigenous peoples, where they would have settled all of these different stuff. That's what we're going to do uh, for the month of November. Then when we return in January, we are going to look at Caribbean economy and slavery. So we are almost finished with this theme. And I believe that we are going well. Anybody else think that we are, think, think otherwise? Are you agree that we are going well? Yes, sir, I think we are doing well. All right, good. So what we are doing now is that once we are through with this, ladies up. Look in the Google Classroom. I put some past papers in it. The Google Classroom. Go through the past paper question. Practice all the past papers on indigenous peoples and Europeans. Because when we are giving the test, it's the same past paper questions we give on the test. So you, if you go through the past paper questions, they go through. Once you finish your topic, you go through the at the top, the question that deals with that topic, guess what? When the test comes, exam, you don't have to worry because it is easy, well, very easy because you'd have gone through it. All right, okay, ladies. sir. We are through now. Enjoy the rest of the day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye, sir. Bye, sir. Bye.